Good evening, guys. Here is our one more class for your series of quick revision within 15 minutes. So today we are going to decide, discuss the topic of MDS, right? Myelodysplastic syndrome. So before going to that, we should know what are the heme phi changes. So previously it was called as myelodysplastic syndrome. Now it is called as myelodysplastic neoplasm, but still it is abbreviated as MDS because if you write MDN, it has that similar thing like NPN, right? So though it is called as myelodysplastic neoplasm, the abbreviation is still MDS. So what are the changes in your new heme file is first, previously we never had a precursor lesion for our MDS. Now we have a precursor lesion that is CHIPS. That is clonal hematopoietis of indetermined potential is one. Next is clonal cytopenia of undetermined significance. Next is previously uh, in our MDS classification, we didn't have the geno genetic subtypes. Now there is new genetic subtypes has been added in that you have three things. One is with 5Q deletion, SF3B mutation and P53 biallelic inactivation. And previously we had MDS excessive blast. Now that excessive blast word is removed and we have MDS increased blast. Previously we had MDS based on single dysplasia, multilinear dysplasia. Now this is an optional, okay? And new entities has been added. New subtypes has been added. Like childhood MDS is a new entity which was added. In that you have a childhood MDS with low blast previously which was called as refractory cytopenias of childhood. And you have some new subtypes that is MDS hypoplastic MDS fibrosis. And MDS NOS is no longer an entity. So these are the changes of WHO hematolymphoid 5 edition from a previous one. Now going back to our topic proper that is MDS myelodysplastic syndromes now it is called as myelodysplastic neoplasm but it is abbreviated as mds not mdn because it has the same pronunciation like mpn so you get got it so it will written as myelodysplastic neoplasm can still be abbreviated as mds so to call it as first it should have the cytopenias so what is the criteria for cytopenia is your hemoglobin in a male patient should be less than 13 or in a female patient less than 12 gram per deciliter. Then your platelet count should be less than 1.5 lakhs. Okay, Platelet should be less than 1.5 lakhs and absolute neutrophil count should be 1800. So this is the criteria for cytopenias. So cytopenia can affect any one hematopoietic lineage is required. One hemato hematopoietic lineage is required, okay? But there is an exception to this, that MDS with 5Q deletion will always present with thrombocytosis, okay? That is about the cytopenias. Now, these MDS are more common in elderly age group, like seventh decade or sixth decade, okay? But in Asian population, so we are Asians. So in Asian population, it is common in younger age group. And I told no, MDS with 5Q, we can have thrombocytosis, right? So these are more common in females. In general, the MDS are more common in male patients and 6 to 7 decade. Whereas in Asians, it is little younger age group, right? Whereas MDS 5Q deletion is common in females and can have thrombocytosis, okay? That was about it, cytopenias. Now coming to dysplasia. So you should see a dysplasia in the your hematopoietic lineage. Either it is erythroid series or either it is myeloid or it is your megacarrier set, right? So dysplasia can be divided into nuclear features and cytoplasmic. With respect to erythroid series in the nuclear, what type of this erythropoietic features you see is nuclear budding, right? Multinucleation, you can see or megaloblastoid change you can see and karyorexis. These are the nuclear dyserythropoietic features. Coming to cytoplasmic, you can see vacuolations, you can see ring sideroblast, okay? Coming to myelo, this myelopoiesis or this 
granulopoiesis. Nuclear features will be hyposegmentations or hypersegmentations. Cytoplasmic will be hypogranularity, hypergranularity or rods, you can see, right? Coming to this megakaryopoiesis, you can see a hypolobated megakaryocyte, hyperlobated or multi lobated megakaryocytes you can see micro megakaryocytes you can see so this is about the dysplasia so you should count at least how many cells 200 cells sorry you can see at least um, 200 cells in your peripheral smear and 200 unucleated cells in your peripheral smear and 500 nucleated cells in your bone marrow okay you have to count then see how many cells are showing this dysplastic features either in erythroid or in your myeloid or in your megakaryocytic series at least 10 percent of that cell should show the features of dysplasia then only you call there is a dysplasia old and who they based on the lineage like only one lineage is showing they used to tell mds with single lineage now we don't use that term. It is optional. Okay. So this is about the dysplasia. Now, one thing you have to remember. If the patient is taking any, um, what you call growth factor therapy, drugs, or he's having infection or metabolic deficiencies, immuno disorders, you should not reclassify the MDS. Okay. No patient should be diagnosed with MDS if clinical uh, history of drug drug history is unknown before calling it as M mds you please rule out the nutritional deficiencies because vitamin b12 can also have megaloblastoid change right drug history without knowing that you cannot call it as mds growth factor therapy drugs infection metabolic deficiencies and immune disorders then only you can call this as mds now coming to the classification of MDS, you have three types. MDS is classified as the one with a defining genetic abnormality and one with morphologically defined and one with is a childhood. So coming to genetically defined MDS, you have three. One is 5Q deletion, one is SF3B1 mutation, one is biallelic P53 inactivation. So definitely you will see 5Q deletion. There should not be monosomy of 7 or 7q deletion by because this is most commonly seen in your acute leukemias okay and where there will be more blasts so either it is mds going into aml or acute leukemia so that why this monosomy 7 or deletion 7 you should not see you can see any other abnormalities along with your 5q deletions now coming to your sf3b1 mutation Okay, here you should not see 5Q deletion and monosomy 7 or any complex karyotype. Okay, now if you don't have a facility to test for this SF3B mutation, then if you are seeing a ring sideroblast in your bone marrow, which are more than 15%, you can directly call it as NDS low blast with your SF3 mutation. That is one thing. So what is the definition of ring sideroblast is it should have at least more five granules, iron granules, and it should cover more than at least two third of your nucleus, right? Why? And this granules will be around the perinucleus. Why? Because here you have the mitochondria. So they get deposited around this nucleus. So that is the definition of ring sideroblast. So you have to do a special stain that is your pearl stain, right? At least you should have more than 15% of ring sideroblasts, which is indicating that this patient has SF31 mutation, right? Next is biallelic P53 inactivation, where your bone marrow should show less than 20% of blasts, you should have a P53 mutation. At least two or more P53 mutations and complex cytogenetic abnormalities or one mutation, which is showing P53 copy number loss with BIFF. Like yesterday class, I told you, you do a NGS, which is a one of the molecular technique, where you will see a varied allele fraction or frequency should be more than 50%. Okay. So this is about the genetically defined abnormality. Now, remember, whenever you utter the word MDS with low blast, always remember the blast count 
will be less than 2% in your peripheral smear and in the bone marrow it is less than 5. You remember no, more than 20% blast will fall as acute leukemia, right? So here you should have less than 20, that is 19. So what is low blast less than 2, less than 5. In peripheral smear less than 2, bone marrow less than 5, that much you remember. Now what about, uh, so now in morphologically defined, what you have? MDS with low blast, MDS with increased blast and MDS hypoplastic, correct? So MDS low blast, same thing. In peripheral smear, you should see 2% less than 2%, bone marrow less than 5%. So when you call it increased blast, anything more than 2, right? More than 2, more than 5, correct? So, and it should be less than 90 because if your blasts are more than 20 or 20, it becomes acute leukemia, correct? So, in peripheral smear, the blast should be somewhere more than 2 till 19, right? In your bone marrow also, the blast should be more than 5 but less than 19. So, this all comes under your MDS with increased blast. So, MDS with increased blast is again divided into 1, 2 and 5 process. So, here blast can be anything like 2 to 19 in peripheral blood and 5 to 19 in your bone marrow. Along with this, you see a fibrosis. We have a grading for fibrosis in the bone marrow. In that grading, at least it should be grade 2 or 3. Now, how to differentiate it? Blast 1 and blast 2 is 2 to 4 in peripheral smear and bone marrow 5 to 9. Above this, we'll go to your increased blast 2. That is in peripheral smear 5 to 9, in bone marrow 10 to 19 or any all routes, it will go into MDS with increased blast 2. Remember, less than 2, less than 5 as low blast. 2 to 4, 5 to 9. Above this is IV2, correct? So, that is the thing. So, next coming to MDS. Uh -huh, one more thing, MDS hypoplastic. So, when you call it as hypoplastic, when your bone marrow cellularity for the age uh, for a young patient, it is less than 30% and for the old patient, it is less than 20%. We call it as MDS hypoplastic. So, this is morphologically defined. So, how we defined MDS by myelodysplastic neoplasm? First, you should define the cytopenia. Then, you should look for dysplasia. Then, you have a classification called as defining genetic abnormalities, which are MDS uh, low blast 5Q deletion, MDS low blast SF3 mutation and by allylic P53 inactivation, right? So, what is the definition for MDS low blast? In peripheral smear less than 2, bone marrow less than 5. In increased blast above that, again it is divided into increased blast 1 and 2. In 1, 2 to 4, in peripheral smear, in bone marrow 5 to 9. Above this will come under increased blast 2, right? Morphologically, you have MDS low blast, MDS increased blast, correct? And MDS hypoplastic. Hypoplastic, the bone marrow cellularity for the age is less than 30% for the young patient and for the older patient, less than 20%, right? Then MDS with increased blast is 1, 2, and you have a fibrosis where you see a grade 2 or 3 fibrosis, right? Now coming to childhood MDS. Childhood MDS is also divided as a childhood MDS low blast, childhood MDS increased blast. Same, you will tell. And again, the low blast is divided into hypocellular or NMS. So, this one.